Well, a very good morning, good evening and good afternoon ladies, gentlemen. Boys, girls, whatever place it is, you're tuned to the Live Signatures Radio, which is a daily podcast on the subjects of purpose, productivity, and resilience. It's a great deal because in this year, God giving us breath, just in the next uh, a couple of 90-something episodes to go, and we hit the 2000 mark. And we're gl- glad about that. This podcast is always going to be focusing on those three things, Purpose, productivity, resilience, and anything in between as a virtual incubator. We'll be doing it in terms of giving you purpose, giving you inspiration, giving you direction, giving you motivation, and also giving you some lessons on resilience. We are in the middle of a series. We're talking about spirit, injecting spirit into your organization or into your pursuits or into your craft. How are you going to do that? That's what we've been discussing in the past three or so episodes. Let's go deeper there. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. So over the past uh, three or so episodes, we've been talking about this idea that if you're to inject some kind of, if you're to go back and infuse spirit into your pursuit or into your organization, the very first thing that you've got to do is to clarify and find out, are you in spirit or not? Is whatever you are doing what is behind what you're doing? If whatever you're doing is directed or sourced or propelled and empowered by spirit, then you're on the right track. But you need to find out if that is the case. And so I've been answering the question, how in the world am I going to know whatever I found out that it is backed by the spirit? And that's why I've been saying there are some few things that you can be able to check and gauge and see. And the very first thing we say that you need to find out if the sole beneficiary, the primary beneficiary, the direct beneficiary, and the enduring beneficiary, if it is you, so if it is someone else, if it is others, if it is others, then most definitely what does that mean? It means that there is a strong connection or a strong suggestion that what you're doing is backed by spirit. You know why? Because spirit is never selfish. Spirit is always about others. Spirit is about, I don't, I don't want to use the word using, but spirit is about cooperating with you to make you a conduit for good, to make you a deliverer for good, to make you a channel through which good flows. Spirit needs You needs me, needs a a body, needs an organization, needs a human being to channel goodness, to channel uh, uh, blessings, to channel these things to other people. So if you find that the reason behind your doing is primarily connected to other people, benefiting, directly connected to other people, benefiting, enduringly connected to other people, benefiting, then it follows that spirit is involved in it. The second thing that we said, if you're 
going to do that, if you're going to gauge and ask yourself, what am I doing? Is it backed by spirit? Then you're going to ask yourself, is there the primary need for you to personally benefit materially? If that is the enduring reason, make sure, by the way, we say this, that there's nothing wrong with primary material gain. Nothing wrong with it. But the thing is, chances are that if that is the case, if the reason behind your pursuit is primarily so that you can materially benefit you as an individual, chances are that it is not necessarily connected to the spirit. Not that the spirit doesn't care about your good, doesn't care about your your benefits, you know, it doesn't care about your wellness, the spirit does. The way we exist in this world is not primarily so that we can care about ourselves. Caring about ourselves is the basic bare minimum. After we have cared about ourselves, and in fact even as we care about ourselves, we've got to go back to the place where we are a conduit of good to this world. So that's the second litmus test. Now the third thing that I'm going to close with today, you need to find yourself, you need to ask yourself, in fact, I'm not going to close this, this is the, the, the other recap, the third thing that we talked about yesterday was, are you doing whatever you're doing, whatever you're pursuing, is it primarily as a means for survival? And we, we spoke about this, we spent some time here, and we said survival is part and parcel of our existence as human beings. But it is not the call. It is not the sole ultimate call for the human being to live on survival mode from the time that they are born to the time that they go back to the grave or they go back to the creator. That is not the call for the human. That's not the design for the human. The, the spirit is not there. Spirit is by, beyond, above and beyond survival. Spirit is above and beyond struggle. Spirit is above and beyond this just enough or less than enough. Spirit is above and beyond average. Spirit is, is, is beyond abundance. It's, 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 it's about transcending. It's about, it's about life. It's about creating. It's about bringing things to pass. It's about newness. It's about projects. It's about strategy, strategic existence. That's what spirit is all about. And so if you find that if whatever you are doing, you, you are immersed in is primarily for the sake of survival, chances are that spirit is not necessarily involved in there. But then let's close with this. Let's close that first portion with this. How do you know that what you're doing, the answer that you've gotten, we say that the first thing you've got to do is to, to infuse spirit into your craft. The first thing is to clarify what is the reason behind your pursuit? The spirit behind your pursuit, what is it? What you found that you're pursuing, you've got to ask yourself, is it spirit connected? How do you how do you know that? Number four, last one. Is what you're doing primarily someone else's idea? Now, this is very interesting. This is very instructive. There is nothing wrong with following someone else's idea. There's nothing wrong with collaboration. There's nothing wrong with partnership. There's nothing wrong with bandwagoning on someone who is already doing something and just helping them and doing it together and so on. There's nothing wrong with that. However, the spirit has a level of originality. If what you're doing is someone else's idea that you don't even have a buy-in yourself, you don't have a buy-in, You've, you've, you've not bathed it. I know some people don't like that word. You've not bathed it. It's not emanating from you. It's not emanating from your core. It's not emanating from the very recesses of your heart and your, your core spirit. Chances are, my friends, that you might not be connected to the spirit. Now, listen. We've got to make a distinction here because the way spirit also operates is that Spirit will give one individual something larger than life to pursue, something greater than life to pursue. And this always works this way. 
and then spirit will also nudge some people to gather around and rally around that one person who is the vision bearer and they are tightly connected they are tightly connected to each other and they are doing it not for the pay we talked about this they are doing it not for the sundown and and payday no they are doing it because it is a cause they are doing it because they want to do it they are doing it because it matters to them they are doing it because they'd rather do it than not so there's, there's just one that, that 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 particular aspect you cannot fault the spirit as far as it is concerned but there is another one where people just come because they're pursuing their own selfish ends selfish, selfish gain and therefore they find someone who is percolating an idea someone who is doing something and all they are asking at the back of their mind is is there money in this is this thing can this thing scale can this thing make me appear on tv can this thing make me some some dollars can this thing make me look good and therefore your pursuit is not your idea your pursuit is someone else's idea and your pursuit is not because you want the idea to flourish the pursuit is because you want to survive so if you look at it from that those particular angles then you'll be able to clarify so what are you doing today what is it that is your project that you're engaged and you're involved in doesn't matter the scale doesn't matter how big how small how huge how humongous doesn't matter how negligible it is in terms of weight on your heart but the questions we're asking is who is benefiting from it primarily is it for your own material gain are you doing it just so that you can be able to survive and is it really your idea to begin with those are the thing the things the four parameters that you've got to gauge and you just get to to take a look at and see am i have i clarified spirit whatever i'm pursuing is it is it involved in, is is spirit involved in this and then if not you will know what to do tomorrow we're going to look at the second the second test the second sign the second how to infuse a spirit into your craft but until then bye bye thank you for listening to life signatures radio if you enjoyed today's show subscribe to life signatures radio on itunes stitcher or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com life signatures radio fresh clean and inspiring